Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone. My name's Jason and today I have something important to talk about. It's important to me and I hope that it is something that is important to my Linux community and the larger Linux community out there because we need to start setting a better example. The name of this podcast that I started last year, the name of this channel is Linux for Everyone. <laughs> um, but it's not called Windows for no one. It's not called Mac OS for no one. And that's exactly what I want to talk about and, and what I want to start driving home in people's heads. Whether you are a, a Linux enthusiast who's been using it since the beginning or whether you're just getting into it. Story time. Back in 2018, it was a few months after I made the switch to Linux. And before I started any kind of podcast about it, before I started writing full-time about Linux at Forbes, I was writing this book. And the name of the book was Linux for Everyone, How to Ditch Windows and Love Your PC Again. But you know what? I haven't finished that book. I, I got about 12 chapters in and I couldn't keep going in the direction I was going. And let me tell you why. Because... I have not completely ditched Windows. I have not completely ditched Mac OS, and I am okay with that. If you listen to the podcast, on episode 27, I talked about how I, I had a little uh, weekend love affair with the Fantasy Star Online 2 beta on Xbox. Well, I got so hooked on that that I decided I wanted to start an account on the Japanese server for Fantasy Star Online 2. And so I made a Sega ID, I installed Windows 10 on my uh, Falcon Northwest Talon, and I started playing. Because it is simply not possible to play that game on Linux. For years and years, I have produced music on a Mac using Logic Pro. Now, I spent probably a couple months uh, dabbling with various digital audio workstations like, like Bitwig and Ardor and things like that, and they just didn't click with me. I was sacrificing my creativity, and I was sacrificing my time to do troubleshooting and learn something new. Now, to a certain extent... I consider that my job, right? It's I consider it my job to try out new things and be open-minded so that I can give opinions and impressions about new Linux operating systems, distributions, apps, and software, hardware. When I think about things that I consume or that I do for my own personal satisfaction, my own enjoyment that mentality doesn't necessarily come into play. I don't necessarily love the hardware, mind you. I don't necessarily love Mac OS, but I love that I can pick up my MacBook Pro and plug in my instruments and just start going. Because A, it's easy, and B, I'm familiar with it. I love that I can I can revisit my Fantasy Star Online obsession from the Dreamcast days with Fantasy Star Online 2 on Windows and I love that there is a GitHub repository that's dedicated to um, English fan translations of that game from Japanese. I think that's cool. That's kind of an open source element to it. Not an excuse, just an observation. But look, I love Linux. I will advocate for Linux. I will promote Linux until my fingers bleed on the keyboard, until my lungs are killing me. And it's because of the close-knit, enthusiastic, supportive, awesome community that we have here. It's the excitement of discovering new things and challenging myself to learn new things. It's the customization. It's all the choice. I love it. But you know what? I'm going to encourage you to dual boot until you don't have to anymore. And for everyone, those requirements are different. Maybe that happens when Adobe brings the creative suite to Linux natively. Maybe that happens when every single new game runs on Linux, when stuff like Easy Anti-Cheat is a non-issue. And you can feel guaranteed that regardless 
of whether your favorite new game is on Steam, Origin, Blizzard, Uplay, any of those, that you can fire it up on day one and it's going to run on Linux. Maybe that's finding a digital audio workstation or professional audio editor that, that works for you, that you're comfortable with, that you like. Maybe it's when you can go out and buy a brand new graphics card or brand new CPU on the week it launches and build a PC and be confident that the Linux OS you choose is going to run it flawlessly. Let me circle back to the book that I was writing and this conflict that I have. When I started writing that book, I was adamant that I was never going to touch Windows again. I was adamant that I could find a way to move my music production from Mac OS to Linux. Maybe someday I will, but that's not going to be on principle alone. And that that is really what I want to drive home. I'm not going to make the choice to use Windows as my daily driver, to use it for my work. Right now, um, I produce the podcast. I do all of my writing. I do all of my video editing, all of my production on Linux. And I'm thrilled with it. It's a workflow that I love and that I'm never going to replace. But Mac OS is going to be there for that rare occasion when inspiration strikes and I want to work on a new song or, or polish up an old song. And I'm not going to feel guilty about that. And you shouldn't either. And you shouldn't make people feel guilty about that. Most of you have no idea that when I first started this channel, I was editing the videos with iMovie on Mac OS because I could not find a stable video editor on Linux. I, I didn't want to not produce content. But then I found Lightworks, and Lightworks has been an absolute dream, and there's a native version for Linux, and so I made that transition. And I made that transition in my own time, and I feel great about it. And that is the thing. We have to let people arrive there on their own time. We have to stop judging them. We have to stop making them feel guilty about it. Because you know what? There are these elitist jerks out there who give people grief all the time and who go on this righteous crusade about, you know, Microsoft is the devil and you're, you're a terrible human if you don't use just free and open source software. And you know what? That does not, that sets a horrible example for people who want to come in and feel welcome. That is why. This says, welcome home. When I talk about Linux, I want people to feel welcomed. I want them to feel like they're home. But that doesn't mean they can't leave the house, right? That doesn't mean that, that they can't go visit something else. Yes, I'm a Linux advocate. I am here to show people all of the amazing stuff that that unravels when you go down this Linux rabbit hole. It, it's full of so many awesome experiences. It's full of so many awesome people. So be one of those awesome people. This is a difficult topic for me to discuss because I feel like I am viewed by by many people out there as this community leader, this um this I don't know, in some ways a Linux celebrity. I mean, I know that uh, I know that right now as you're watching this, the YouTube channel's not that big, but I've been writing about Linux for about a year and a half at Forbes. Sometimes when I write something there, it'll be in the Forbes top five most read articles. Millions and millions of unique people have, have visited my articles there, and it put me in a weird position because... For so long, I wanted to be the guy who just used Linux. And, you know, I put my money where my mouth is, right? I walked the walk. But I'm also a pragmatist, and I think you have to give people the freedom and the flexibility and the, and the, almost the compassion. Changing your operating system can be difficult. Changing your, your play habits, your work habits, those are especially difficult for a lot of people, myself included. So what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to say, yeah, guys, Linux is freaking amazing. But 
I'm not going to knock you to the ground if you don't want to use Linux at all, or if you want to stay on Windows and Linux, or if you want to use Windows and Mac OS and Linux, or if you choose an Xbox over a PS4. Like, look, enjoy your life. Technology is meant to make life easier in many, many ways. I believe Linux will do that for you. But the reality, folks, is that it won't do it for everyone. So let's take that spirit of welcome home and make people feel welcome. But don't lock them in a cage and don't judge them. And like I always say, take care and take care of each other. I'll see you next time.